I'm Art Rosenbaum, and welcome to my teaching video, which will focus on traditional banjo tunings. Along with uh, John Cohen, George Gibson, Stu Jameson, Mike Seeger, and Anita Kermode, I've taken a special interest in old-time banjo tunings in the American tradition. I'll show you about 40 that I've acquired over the years, you know, how to get the banjo into the tunings, something about how to use them. I just turned 72 and have been playing the five-string banjo since my teen years in Indianapolis. Got started with Pete Seeger's book, How to Play the Five-String Banjo. Then I learned a lot from recordings. Then I got to meet in person some old-time banjo pickers, and I've known many over the years who were really generous sharing their picking styles, tunes, and tunings. I'm still learning. Here's a tune my good friend Ed Teague of Livonia, Georgia taught me just this last year. He learned it as a kid in Raven County, Georgia. Uh, it's called Greenville Street. As I walked down Greenville Street, pretty little girl I chanced to meet. Oh, my lover, are you traveling? No, oh, by Jesus, I'm a goober graveling by and by. I'm on Mary for a die, pretty little girl with a bright blue eye. I think that's a pretty little uh, song and tune, and I tried to play it in a simple up-picking style, uh, close to the way Ed Teague plays it. Old-time American banjo picking is characterized by a lot of different picking styles. What I call down picking uh, is also called in different regions, uh, claw hammer, frailing, overhand, knockdown. It comes from the old stroke style where all the movement is hitting downward on the strings. Originated in Africa. Then there are lots of different up-picking uh, techniques. Uh, and there are two-finger techniques with a thumb lead. Or two-finger techniques with the index lead, sort of like what I was playing in Ed Teague style. And various three-finger styles uh, that came out of the uh, so-called guitar style in the late 19th century. Uh, and they eventually evolved into bluegrass, but some of the old-timers played earlier three-finger styles. But the tunings that we're going to emphasize here are really a key element, uh, the heart and soul of old time playing. Some are common, a lot of players know them, most players know them, others are unusual. My first revelation about the importance of the tunings came from Pete Seeger's book where he introduced several different tunings. And he wrote that his early mentor, Rufus Crisp of Allen, Kentucky, knew some 15. You know, that uh, got me all interested in learning more about tunings. Then I heard Crisp on a Library of Congress record talking about banjo tunings, you know, how you run the bass string down for Little Bobby Do and how you run this string up for this or the other. And he says the, that's the main important part about music. You've got to get your instrument in the right tune. And uh, later I understood that to uh, refer to tunings, not only just getting it in tune. The tunings and the old time styles were intertwined. Never got to meet Rufus Chris, but uh, let me quote another old-timer whom I knew very well, W. Guy Bruce of Screamersville in northwest Georgia. Now it's more blandly called Welcome Hill Community. I'll try to say it uh, the way Guy said it. He said, whenever I was a sprout, you might say, in my banjo picking, he, he said the people up north said, banjo, we like the way you play your banjo, Mr. Bruce. But, but he said it in the old-time way, banjo. Heard somebody pick it and asked how he tuned the banjo. He said, tuned it in Shady Grove key. We didn't know nothing about F and G and C and D and A and all like that. Just tuned the banjo in Shady Grove key or Shout Lulu key or Cabbage key or Greenback key, something like that. 
First time I ever tried to pick Shady Grove with anybody, well, there was an old gentleman name of Perkins lived across the river from where I live now. I've been a thomping around on it. He played the fiddle. He said, son, tune your banjo in Shady Grove key. I said, Shady Grove key? He said, yes, I'm playing in Shady Grove. You're not with me. I said, tell me how. He kindly told me how. I was kind of picking it in the Shout Lula key, noting down on the bass. That way you don't never note the bass. It's done up there, you see. That's the reason why I have to tune my banjo so many ways. It's because I pick a lot of open strings. Banjo pickers nowadays, they tune the banjo up. They can go from one place to another, you see. I pick a lot of open strings. That's why I have to tune the banjo in different keys. That's the way I learned, you know, many years ago. I think I was talking about the way bluegrass players do a lot of chording. You know, they go all around the banjo and they don't count on the old tunings to give them open strings, but they play more intricate figures that depend on chording. Almost all the tunings I'll show you here come from traditional sources. Many I learned firsthand from old time banjo pickers, some from the work of other tuning enthusiasts and researchers, others I doped out from listening to the recordings. In a few instances where I've come up with a tuning without a really clear traditional origin, uh, although it sounds appropriately traditional to me, I will let you know about that. I've avoided modern or newly invented tunings. The tunings are grouped in families or keys to make moving from one tuning to another easier. And although many, many tunings will be given from the most well-known to some very unusual ones, this compendium is not definitive or complete. It is intended to be useful to the banjo player and is not a scholarly work. Gradually expanding the tunings you know and use will give breadth and depth to your playing. Atmosphere, as Wade Ward expressed it to John Cohen. Some tunings are sprightly and cheerful. Well, that was in the open C tuning. Actually, it was tuned up a uh, whole tone to D. Uh, and some of the tunings were uh, more mournful, like uh, Doc Boggs' country blues tuning. Let's start going through uh, 40 tunings. Now, don't worry. We'll do them little by little, and we'll do them in groups of related tunings. I'll give each one uh, by the notes uh, from the fifth through the first string. Say the open G tuning will be G, D, G, B, D. Sometimes they'll be designated by the key names, like the G tuning. Sometimes uh, folk or regional designations like sawmill tuning. And sometimes uh, simply by the tune, like uh, the Twin Sisters tuning, uh, Little Birdie tuning, uh, as W. Guy Bruce said, or the Cabbage Key or the Shady Grove Key. We're going to use another system that will help you get the banjo in tune to itself. And this is a four number system. I'll give four numbers with each tuning. And here's how it works. By the way, this system was introduced in the Banjo Newsletter, a, a good magazine that I uh, recommend to all of you. Okay, you start with the fourth string uh, pretty much where you want it. Let's say that's where you want the fourth string. The first number you see will be a five. That means you stop the fourth string at the fifth fret. And you tune the next string up the third string to that note. That's in pretty good tune. The next number you see will be, in this case, a four. That means you note or stop the third string at the fourth fret. And you tune the second string to it. That sounds about right. Now I'm going to intentionally kind of get the first string out of tune. Next number you see will be on the string you just tuned, the second string, stopped at the third fret. That'll be a three. No good. That's low, that's flat, so 
Remembering that note, you tuned it up. Try it. Went too far. That sounds about right. And the final thing you do is you stop the first string at the fifth fret. That's the fourth number. So that'll be a five. And that's what you tune the thumb string or the fifth string to. Okay, so here are the numbers again. Five, four, three, five. For the open G tuning. There's another notion I'd like to tell you about here, and that's the notion of noting or chording. Uh, noting, uh, the way the old time banjo pickers have it, is when you stop one string at a time. Um, usually, or hammer, pull, so there you're noting around the G tuning. Some of the tunings that uh, are played in a noting approach uh, don't sound good when they're played open. Uh, they need to have at least one string noted in order to make sense, but we'll get to those later on. Now the other approach is the chording approach. The G tuning you can use for noting or chording. Chording is when, of course, you stop several notes at once to make a chord figure. G, C, G, D seventh, G. All right, let's do Sourwood Mountain as an example of a noting approach. Did you note, no pun intended, that I stopped only one string at a time to get through the tune of Sourwood Mountain? Chickens crowing on Sourwood Mountain, hey de um dum diddle um day. So many pretty girls just can't count them, hey de um dum diddle um day. In other words, in that little passage, uh, there was only one string stopped or pulled or hammered or sliding at a time. So you'd say that was noting the banjo for Sourwood Mountain. Now, um, let's see, uh, let's try a, a tune that uses the chord approach. Um, I think Guy Bruce talked about the cabbages, violin cabbage down, so we'll just run through that a little bit. Violin cabbage down, make them whole cakes brown. Only tune that I can play is violin cabbage down. Now the noting and the chording approaches sometimes overlap. I don't want to make too uh, strong a distinction between them. Uh, let's use little Maggie as an example. Now if you'd want to play it uh, with just kind of single notes noted out, it would sound something like this. But you could play something like this. You could play a kind of quasi F chord. Or add another finger. And here you're playing uh, the first fret of the second string, the second fret of the third, and the third fret of the fourth string. Or let's do it going from the open G, which is a G chord, to a full F chord. And here you put the little finger down the third fret of the first string. Well, here we went from a noting approach where you stopped just one string at a time to stopping two strings at a time for a certain effect or three, or a full chord. And the way you approach that really depends on how you want the tune to sound. 
Well, let me uh, play and sing a verse or two of Little Maggie. And let me tell you right now that uh, to get through uh, 40 some tunings, uh, we'll not be able to do whole songs or tunes. We'll do fragments, uh, but I'd like to give you a little fuller version of a few of them. So here's Little Maggie. Thank you. 